Salut and welcome to episode 7 of the Romaniac show. We are here with another guest. Yes, another fantastic guest. We have Christian yes. Dasulescu. Dasulescu. Dasculu. Dasculu. You are very close. Okay. Very close. I, I got a lot of words, words than the names like over the years. Fantastic. <laughs> well, we're here with Christian Dasulescu, um, who is a programmer who used to work for Facebook and Google and now co-owns his own, his own company where he's helping programmers become freelancers. Isn't that right? That's correct. Fantastic. Perfect. Well, we're very happy to have you here. Um, Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Love your vibe. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you so good, much. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's great. That's great to hear. We, we were very interested. First of all, Facebook and Google, they're big, big companies. Yes. How did that come about? Well, it was like a great experience for me. Um, uh, I got there by, you know, being very persistent in applying to their uh, job openings like, mm. that they had. Um, so it's a very interesting story. Like uh, I got rejected like three years in a row. No way. Uh, just applying, applying with the same uh, CV, like I didn't change <laughs> my resume. Um, and uh, for I had luck on the fourth year um, because, uh, you know, I kind of talked with some people in there and uh, like I kind of forced myself uh, yeah. into like getting an interview okay. the position because it's hard to get the first interview. I was good at computer science, so the interviews were like, uh, fairly easy yeah. and uh, then I got to to work for for these companies and f first of all before before all you are you are 100 Romanian aren't you yeah we we're talking before this you're from from what I know yeah <laughs> from <laughs> yes yes from Craiova Craiova yeah. yeah and you did all your schooling like your programming I guess schooling here yeah, I mean, uh, high school uh, was like general high school, uh, but uh, I got really obsessed with uh, with uh, learning like computer science and going like to Olympiads and con contests and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was like my main obsession from morning to evening in high school. Um, and then I went to college uh, here in uh, Bucharest at the, the University of Bucharest. Um, and I pers pursued that uh, further along, like, you know, the passion. And, um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so so when when you uh, started learning as for yourself, what so you teach yourself basically? It came out of a passion when you were younger. Um, the Pre pretty much, yeah. I mean, I, we had teachers in high school, but lots of times, like um, they were great up to a point. But uh, if you wanted to go like a bit far, uh, you had to learn on your own, you know, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. like they only. Um, Thought like what was in the uh, the how do you say like the basic curriculum. the basic uh, yeah. curriculum exactly yeah. yeah and after that you know you need to to go on the internet and you have internet and you go around and I also try yeah. to learn from other people as well so yeah but who what was it. your main source of learning uh, ooh there were many <laughs> because in high school you know I also went to some uh, college courses uh, I was like in the ninth grade and I went to study some. Uh, uh, gaming uh, courses from uh, some company that they were for college students. Um, and I really learned from the beginning, like I had years ahead, like lots of people uh, okay. because I got that information. Uh, then like on the internet, like there was a community called infoarena.ro. Uh, yeah. um, this is like very specific for like contests in, uh, in algorithmic, uh, like uh, computer science, really deep stuff there like to, to learn. And I really loved it. Um, so getting in those communities, learning from all the people that were posting in there um, and also putting in like lots of hours and like um, just made uh, made it easy for me. Yeah. yeah. Do you do, does your family have some background in, in that direction? Is like or did you really did the passion came? You were the first one who had uh, that passion. They, they didn't have like computers growing up. So I wouldn't yeah. say that they had passion <laughs> in, in, uh, in computer science or something, yeah. but, but they had like a technical uh, inclination. Yeah, that, I that is say. the thing. Okay. Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's what I what I kind of realized also growing up that the families where people like you had the fascination. It was mainly the, f the dads were mainly the ones who were the first ones to catch up on the internet to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, have yeah. a computer at yes. home. And we were so late. Yeah. We were so late and then we had just, we had ages LAN cable. Same with yours. Same with us, yeah. yeah. We had the computers, <laughs> what we called them was the computers with the fat backs. Yeah. Mm. So the back of it was just huge. Whoa, yeah, yeah for, a long t for a long time, even though they, they were like straight normal yeah, ones out. Same. And we're just using the LAN cable. So much so that my father, I believe in 2015, my dad, um, he got a new laptop. 
and we also moved house and he was trying to he always used to sit near the LAN cable so that he can mm. plug it into his laptop. No way. <laughs> and then so we moved house and he's like, yeah, how do I do with this LAN cable? We need an extender because where, where I like to sit, like in the living room, it can't reach the Wi-Fi router. And we realized that even on his old laptop, he didn't know what wi like just how you could use the internet without using a LAN cable. <laughs> he thought that's how, that's the only way to do it. Yeah. And then we thought, okay, his old laptop, he could just use it with the LAN cable. We checked his old laptop. You could also just use Wi-Fi just normally. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole time yeah. he was just positioning himself in such awkward places so that he can yeah, get the LAN cable. Yeah. yeah, so for us, programming and, and technology wasn't a big thing in our household. But yeah. I, I mean, programming is something that's so strange for me. It's for also you as for well. Me, I have to be honest. It's a subject I... I didn't have any any. Uh, Did you guys had programming in school or like in I high school? I had IT, but I our IT was started with a creative way. We had like um, photo editing and those kind of things. And later, um, I think we started programming. I don't even, but not just uh, JavaScript and those things we didn't use. But it well, was what did you do? Like what, I, what language? What we did was programming websites, kind of. So Ooh, HTML, kind of. Uh, I don't CSS. Yeah, it was basically we had a database with like, mm. and we had to do the, um, how do you say, the formulas and the if if connections. How do you say again? Like right, yeah, like uh, SQL sequences, like or yeah, maybe exactly. like extracting things from the database. And exactly, okay. and then we had to and we had to program really the database itself, like search field. Those oh, kind I of see. things, but mm -hmm. it was so complicated. And normally, I'm someone who picks up very fast on technology or like the editing that I just did here in one year. I, I learned myself, but that was something I couldn't. I couldn't like it was for me. It was I couldn't really get it. Like grab, you know, I couldn't see what's going on. It's a yeah. whole different language, as you said, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Like you, you get into this world. You get immersed into this world of like, uh, uh, you know, thinking in. Uh, in a, in a computer language basically which is a bit different you know from the the human language i mean mm -hmm. you can and you need to wrap your mind around that interface with the computer and you write code in there and you need to be very specific very clear in your thoughts and in your actions to download them into like a code Uh, that works and uh, you get like lots of errors and you don't know what the hell is going on mm. and you spend like days uh, trying to debug things um, so for sure is a it's another language another word but i think it's very powerful in a way because it, it forces you like to to be very organized in your in your thoughts you know mm -hmm. i think this is the main benefit i got from learning like programming because it really forced me to be uh, articulated with my mind and make sure like when I have a problem to break it down in very small steps uh, so I can easily uh, easily uh, resolve it. Because okay, you yeah. cannot tell a computer, hey, uh, go to, to buy some bread, you know? You need yeah. to tell him like, hey, this is the map of the, the house. You need yeah. to get out from, uh, using this route. You need to press the handle. You, you need to like yeah. tell him everything, every, every step along the way. Um, so this like really helped me along the way later on down the road when I was making like YouTube videos mm. because it helped me like uh, creating storylines and being very, um, e making it very easy for me to learn new things. And also as a, as a manager for my team. Like mm -hmm. to explain, it's very important to communicate well with the team. So instead of like expecting people just to understand what I mean by saying just a phrase, yes. I, I was very obsessed with breaking down that f phrase in like very small steps. Like, like I was like crazy in like how simplistic I would break down like a process in the business to be able to, to delegate it further to my team and yeah. Yeah. enable my team to, you know, do their, their yes, job. Yes, especially yeah. with the least errors because the more yeah. clear the communication is, then the, yeah, exactly. you don't leave free space for, for maybe a objective uh, interpretation of what is uh, had been said and what what's the plan exactly and yeah. that's why like every process that we have in a business is like a checklist and mm. if we have like for instance for YouTube videos like we have a checklist oh, like okay. this is how you upload to YouTube video you go ah, on okay. YouTube mm. and you have like you click on the upload button in the right top right corner then you yeah. select yeah. the file then you put the title here then you, you yeah know, and the so you don't everything miss. is very 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 well documented in there yeah. People, some, people sometimes overlook 
uh, doing things that way. They think it's it's babying it, or uh, you all understand the steps and things like. That. But it it really helps, especially when I'm looking to do something for the first time. I want you to baby me. I want you to yeah. like treat me like a child, so that yeah. I don't mistake something. Like you said, take something subjectively. Like, yeah, upload. Okay, well then I download it or something instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's much better that way. Oh it's, yeah, for sure. It's like a pain because it takes like lots of time and you time. you yeah. need to really uh, you know just download your brain into like a process and it's very frustrating because you already uh, you i already did like upload like hundreds of videos now i need to explain how to upload a video it's yeah. very yeah. painful but it saves like lots of time further down the line because uh, people do, you don't need to spend time teaching people then you don't need to uh, take care of like small details that can go wrong um and uh, this is how at least for us, it was like going to be like a business, like to get get ourselves some more times, you know. Yeah. Now, now we jumped to the business side, but uh, we can go back to the programming part. No, I, you said something. You said um, Olympias that you took part in. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that a lot. I had a programming friend and he took part in them. But what is it? Well, it's like a contest. Uh, it's a national contest, and you can also go to like a European level or like a <laughs> That's crazy. world level, you know, like to compete with other people. Um, I all only got to like the notion national level. I got like a bronze medal in there. Uh, this does, doesn't mean like I was third place. I was in the I don't know first half the country or something like that um, yeah, from the like the final pool of people, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, well, how this work is like there are contests uh and uh, you go and you compete with other people um and uh, the way it would work is like you get a couple of problems and you need to type the solution into the computer and then um your solution is tested with some test cases and it basically you write some code that code gets an input and it should output something that the 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 people that review it ha have have already run, yeah exactly and it okay. has to match very well like it okay. has to be like one on one uh, matching and uh, if it works you get like uh, 100 points and uh, you you get scored uh, on how many test cases you have like green light on but what is t can you give an uh, example of what yeah. you are coding is it like uh, i don't know i can't imagine what was one problem that you had to solve well, th there are lots of problems. Uh, <laughs> let, let me give you like a, sm a small example. Like uh, you can have like a, a, a list of numbers and you need to, to sort the numbers, you know. This is like very, very basic, like super, super easy. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't get that in a contest, but I just use it yeah, like yeah, yeah. For, for example, for, for us, uh, yeah, for us. uneducated yeah. people <laughs> to explain to us. <laughs> and, you know, there, there are various ways in, in which you can like sort a list of numbers because you can take them one by one and just compare them and yeah. with each other. But this that will means, take too long, yeah. Yeah, that, that will take too long. You, you already know that. Uh, and then you have like uh, more advanced algorithms that would enable you to do that uh, faster. Uh, I mean, yeah, for 10 numbers, it's okay. It's very easy for a computer. But what if you have like a billion numbers, you know? Mm. Then you have like various algorithms that give you like various performances. You can have like um, better time uh, or like uh, using less memory, uh, mm -hmm. various constraints that you can play with. And... Um, the problems, like, they are just, like, puzzles that you need to solve. Like, they are very logical puzzles that you need to unfold and solve and make sure that you high, uh, take the highest score in the the time that you have in a contest because you have, mm -hmm. like, two hours. Okay. Uh, lots of pressure. If you make one mistake, you are zero. Like, even if you have, like, the right solution in mind, you miss, like, one, one, one little detail, you are out, you are zero. What? Yeah. But that's because the final solution would would be completely Wrong. off, isn't it? Yeah, everything. because because you know you know like when you miss like a semicolon or something, yeah, it, yeah it, it's everything over. doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same with these test cases. This the output of the test case should be like identical with what they have um, mm -hmm. in there. And if there's one slight match, like for instance, <laughs> if you if you are expected to print one, and you print uh, space one you can like take zero on that you know yeah. yeah because it's just an error and it's like so frustrating this is the why yeah. i became so perfectionistic you know like <laughs> yeah you have to be as a programmer yeah. i guess you do oh yeah yeah because we also have to remember that the things that you are programming for you in the contest it's a huge it's a huge thing that this small error if it appears you know to the 
to the let's say to the maximum thing of winning it like the to have everything right but let's take that when once it's finished let's say you worked on something you programmed something and then this is used to evaluate something in medicine this is again something so small like the biggest thing that you achieved then is a small algorithm to for some diseases or something to calculate and the error line which occurs if that is wrong is just incredible oh yeah yeah oh yeah that's why in industry like they have like lots of tests tests and uh, the way you do uh, development is like you write like the code and then you also write tests for the code and you as a programmer okay. you design the test so before you launch that thing in the production uh, the code gets tested by your own tests and then uh, if uh, some bugs appear in the production you write some more tests in order that if somebody like two years from now changes the code and it changes in a way that's not correct, the test that Says, you wrote yeah. will fail and yeah. he will know like, hey, I need to make this like uh, work properly. So, and, yeah. And the test, they just t have some, for example, reference numbers where they know that this should be the outcome or how does it work? Yeah, so the test basically, like let's say you write a, a, an algorithm to store some numbers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and the test, how it works is like you write a test that gives an input to the, that algorithm. Let's say mm -hmm. it gives like one, uh, four, three. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the test knows that the output of that uh, piece of code should be one, three, four, you know. Okay. And yeah. the, the test basically runs that piece of code and it expects and it checks if the the output is one three four and if it's not it fails and it won't allow you to push into production uh and you need to fix that before Gee. yeah it's very good it's crazy yeah. yeah i mean in development you spend like 50 percent of time maybe writing tests like just really yeah wow. this this was like at google like we had to write like code and yeah. for for each line of code you write like tests and uh documenting it and making it yeah uh, you know what what was your job at Google? Well, I worked in multiple projects. So I worked in Gmail. I worked in uh, uh, in uh, Google Cloud, uh, in Google Search as well, uh, in Google Donations. So uh, basically, it was related to adding new features to this brilliant system that, like you know, Gmail or mm -hmm. uh, Google Search uh, is. Like me, like this is like a like a like. It's incredible complex. I cannot comprehend it with my mind. Like it's <laughs> like an amazing piece of engineering. Um, and you had like a, like a little grain of sand that you add there, you know, your own contribution. Yeah, and you need yeah. to make sure that uh, it works and it delivers some results. And uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, pretty much that's it. Like on a day-to-day -day basis, you, you go and uh, you have some tasks that are uh, discussed with your manager and you need to like resolve them. You write some code for it. Uh, maybe you set up a, a meeting to with other people that have uh, written code um, where, you are, where you are supposed to change it okay. and make sure that, you know, everyone is on the same page with the changes that mm -hmm. you want to, to, to make. Uh, once you have this design of what you are expected to do, you then proceed to writing the code. Uh, then you add some tests. Then you send it to review to other peers. In Google, for instance, you cannot submit code unless two other people... Okay, so it's really it. it's it's like a setup checklist kind of. So yeah, so two people have to confirm with their on their name. Okay, I checked it, and then you see okay it was checked by this guy. The other guy has to check exactly. it. And uh, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. So you you send it and uh, uh, two people, but don't, not two random people, like two people that really work closely with you or they work on that feature. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people mm -hmm. that know what's what what's what you're doing on, yeah. there. Yeah. Mm. Um, and they give you comments and they ask you to change it, to modify yeah. it and you kind of swear to them and it's, <laughs> it's not <laughs> because it's frustrating because yeah. they always come back with more comments. Yeah. Um, and after you make like um, the final version, uh, the other guy gets to, to leave some comments, you modify yeah, it again yeah. and then you add, uh, you, you push it to production. Yeah. And how... How was the whole environment? Did you work from in the office or from home? I worked in the office. So this was like before uh, the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, in the US? US and uh, Switzerland for Google and uh, London for Facebook. How was it? Was that the first time? So moving to work for Google, was that the first time you leaving Romania? Uh, first time to live outside. I traveled outside Romania before that. Yeah, yeah. But and but how? to live to live it was the first time. Yeah, go, in go. Switzerland. Yeah, first time to. And how was that move from Romania yeah. going there? Exciting. 
Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Where where in in Switzerland was it? Zurich. Zurich more. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Not a bad place for yeah, for yeah. first time travel. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I found it very, uh, you know, very quiet, and I. I I mean I really love Zurich and like it's great for from nature standpoint like an outdoor sports it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. But when I got there and being like adjusted with like Romania and I got into the Zurich train from the airport to like the city like it was so quiet compared with like yeah. what you have here in Romania. Yeah, it's a bit busy. Yeah. I think that's what people have told. I have family members in in the German speaking part of Switzerland and they say yeah. that life there is yeah, Zurich it's is. incredibly yeah. just work back home just very you know yeah all the corner down. also where i used to live it's all the same like there my my sister is living in constance mm. you know mm-hmm. in the, the german corner of the uh, bodensee of the yeah, yeah it's like one hour from zurich and uh yeah it is it is a very uh, very quiet. very quiet and very well comfortable yeah. area yeah it yeah. is how long did you stay there for uh i went there for like the first internship was like four months and i think the second was like the same so four months uh, eight months in total but in two different years okay wow. and this was right before the pandemic uh it was like no it was like a couple of years ago like it was 2015 i think okay or okay something okay. like that okay and then what was what would you say was the most your best you, let's say your best story and the most how do you say the, the story that you remember the the most from uh working for google if someone asks you now on the street yeah. tell me one thing about it well what I, was I, I really learned like like i was like surrounded with like the best people in the world in there you know like in terms of like software engineering mm-hmm. they do things on a scale that you cannot even comprehend so all the little details like the tiniest details matter when you scale something to a billion users you know mm-hmm. um and uh, i remembered that i got the confidence that i i'm not i'm not beneath them because when i arrived there it was my first job out of college you know my first serious job mm. uh i was from Krajowa, you know getting to zurich mm-hmm. to google like <laughs> all, crazy, these, yeah. all these people with phds yeah. around me working yeah. and coding and you know very very smart guys and I remember opening like, you know, the code base from Google and I was like, fuck, I don't understand anything here. Like it was, wow. it's like so abstract, like the level is like crazy. And um, for the first two weeks, I just had to be there like 12 hours, just trying to understand every piece of it and make sense out of what is expected of me. Mm. So like the two weeks I remember, like they were like grinding nonstop. Um, <laughs> and then I get a hang of it because, you know, my brain works pretty well and uh after that it was like very easy like i just uh, yeah it just went and i got the confidence that you know i can i can do this very well yeah um so that was like the main thing for me from there because you know i learned that people are awesome you know at google but i'm awesome as well and uh i can do whatever i want if i set my mind to it yeah is that why you decided to make the move to facebook uh facebook like uh (laughs) The the story with Facebook is interesting because they rejected me as well. And when I got into Google, I also emailed them and I told them, hey, Google accepted me. Well, yeah. The, uh, you know, what are you doing? Come e- on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And they gave me some interviews and I passed them and then uh, I got internship at Facebook as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it pushed, it gave you this. I think that's important for all of us. You need this first thing that gives you a lot of confidence to then move on to the next bigger step. Um, would you say that for you i mean you have no comparison but something that we realize is that for romanians due to the stigma that uh, romanians kind of feel from people abroad mm-hmm. was that playing a big role in that that you were maybe in the beginning thinking like oh you know i'm 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 not like from i'm not from switzerland or maybe america yeah, or yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah for sure that was like a part of it you mm-hmm. know because you you kind of feel a little bit uh, you have these programs in your mind you know and you feel a little bit inferior going uh, out there and you know um not only being from eastern europe but also like being a beginner you know and yes. surrounded by all those giants and you see like people that have have been like complex systems in there that, that you use on a daily basis like mm. we all use gmail and youtube yeah. and google search so yeah. being surrounded by this kind of people like it's hard to yeah, it has to, be crazy. <laughs> to, to not be intimidated you know yeah 
Yeah, yeah I think it's a big... I mean, I have that fear also sometimes, you know, especially the thing is wh when you are studying, while you're studying or teaching yourself, the thing is that you don't have such a big insight into how on which level the other people are. No. Yeah. And you always, also for me studying dentistry, I'm always like imagining... I remember in the second year, I was like, oh my goodness, in four years, I have, I have to sit there treating my own patient completely. Yeah. And you you think of everything that those people know and how should I do it? But when you really go step by step, you just look in front of you what has to be done right now, then you you actually gain the confidence to to go each step further. Yeah, and and I also think that being, being surrounded with challenges and like people yes. that are way ahead of you, like it really forces you to take that massive leap and you know to breach yeah. the gap much quicker that you would have done in not yeah. any other ways. It's because yeah. you always compare yourself to people around you in your yeah. circle. So for example, us, we probably compare ourselves to people in our class. How good are we compared to them? Yeah, I'm going to be a great doctor, better than some people here, or no, I'm not going to be. Um, and then the same would happen once you graduate and yeah. you go to somewhere where there are elite doctors there. And you're like, look, I'm terrible. And yeah. you have to get up to speed. You will still maybe feel like oh, I'm terrible compared to these people after a year. But if you moved yourself to a smaller pool where people weren't as good, you will think that you're oh, the, the same. Best. Well, uh, yeah, I'm the best. Beforehand, the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it really depends on where you circle yourself, and that's why it's best to circle yourself with people who are, if possible, way better than you in the field that you want to enter. Yeah, that, so that's that a great point. That's a great point that you're making. I and I'm convinced about this. Like. The easiest way to grow is just to surround yourself with the greatest people. Yeah, yeah, that's like, for sure. You don't need to do anything else. Just make sure that you engineer your environment. That's why we invite people like you to the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why no, we surround is. with people yeah. like you guys. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is really it's something that we enjoy because since this whole journey, like you, I mean, for you especially when you worked at Google, I'm pretty sure you had to value your time like incredible. Also, yeah. your 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 free time and. That's something that we can tell for sure. Since we do so much next to studying, we don't. This is what we enjoy when we enjoy talking to people. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't have the time to have people over and then you know talk about. And mostly we don't know what. Then the conversation may go into a way where you don't learn or you know. And and, and, and I think it's a great habit that you guys have. You know, to meet people and uh, just talk with them because I think lots of people are focusing. You know, and getting the right grades and stuff but you yeah. know it's also about like meeting people learning from them like uh, yes. even other industries because yeah. everything it opens up your mind and your you know yeah uh, then that's really the best point that yeah. that is for sure what is so interesting um yeah especially this journey tell us uh, when you started at facebook or in general one thing i'm very curious about is the whole working environment is it really like because sometimes you read like Google, they have like special chairs and they have special Ooh, scheduling and the break, the break. Yeah, like yeah. it's really like they go hardcore on like the things that other businesses don't even think about. Yeah, it's better than what they say. Really? Really? Oh yeah. What are some <laughs> What are some cool stuff that you guys did in the office? Well, yeah, for 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 starters, you have food like three times a day plus like micro kitchens with you. You have nonstop food like and <laughs> not just three restaurants. You have multiple restaurants to choose from like on the on the side. Uh, really? So that's one thing for free. Like anything, yeah. any uh, how how much you want to eat, you just go there. That's why everybody that goes to Google, like in the first couple of months, they they gain weight. Like okay, <laughs> yeah. It's a kind of I think it's a checked statistics uh, about that. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, you have uh, massages. You have like a music room. What? What, what was massages. the one? Massages. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, we uh, didn't even get to the music rooms, but what, massages oh, like. So in your break, people are just massaging you, like you, or your fingers, like oh, your fingers. I so mean, tired. You, you, you need to request like a time to go to have massage. I mean, it's not something somebody coming to you. Yeah, hey, no, I mean, yeah, not like in a movie. Yeah, like everyone just sitting there, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you have like also chairs, but also like a, a trained specialist that can like give you a massage if you need one. You need, you know. Um, you also have meditation rooms. You also have like uh, sleeping rooms. Like if you have, like after lunch, if you are a bit like you know sleepy, you can go take a nap in there. Um, music rooms. Uh, what what does that mean? But instruments to play. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just it's just like a soundproof room. Uh, like you get in there, you have like electric yeah, guitar, no. you have like a piano, you have like drums, you have like that anything that great. you anything that you want, like. I, that, that's where I spend most of my time. Do you play an instrument? Yeah. What I do you do. play? I play guitar and a little bit of piano. Oh. oh. Yeah. yeah. 
and that's why I spend <laughs> most of my time there, that's apart from uh, like my office, you know. That's great. Yeah, man, I uh, that that is ridiculous. Do people really? Do people take? Um, do they take advantage of these kind of services that are offered? In your you, opinion, you no, no. I mean, you would think so, but the the people that get there, they 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 have a, they are professionals, you know. So they are already at some level, so they know that they have to do their job and they use their time wisely, you know. And no, I mean, do, do people actually use all of these facilities oh, a lot? Oh yeah, for sure, for yeah? sure. Okay, I mean, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do it there. They play music. They play ping pong or whatever games are there. Oh, it yeah. seems like you can live there. Oh, I, I actually did, but some people did. They well, just never I, left. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. just stayed when you wanted to sleep. You slept. Yeah. You woke up. You used the kitchens. I remember I slept one night in there because I was with some friends visiting, and the train, the night train, was already gone, and we didn't want to spend money on the tax because it was crazy expensive yeah. in Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but you are not allowed to sleep in there. But we kind of sneaked <laughs> in, and we mm. we slept uh, on the nap rooms. You know where yeah. it's like you have beds and stuff, but. Were your friends programmers in there as well? Uh, they were not at the time. They were. <laughs> I mean, well, they were just your friends at that time, just visiting you at work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you guys great. were just sleeping there, and yeah. one day somebody wakes up like, uh, um, "Hello, exactly, <laughs> exactly." I mean, you are allowed to bring visitors, so this is like really? part of the company culture. Okay. Yeah, no way. Yeah. And you just register them like you guys. Yeah. If I would work there, like you would come, I would register you, get a badge visitor, and you can go and eat with me and you know have fun in there. That is great. That is good. That's very good. Now. Oh yeah. I think I, that's exactly the impression I had beforehand. I imagine it like in a movie, like really like like not real, like when those kind of things uh, happen. And on top, they they really really evaluate the right balance when it's about works because everyone who had this time where you work so so much you realize after some time wait i should respect my sleep schedule yeah. and the breaks because then when i work those six hours i'm so much more efficient than mm -hmm. working 10 hours for yeah and google is a company that really understands this you know because you're yeah. not getting paid to work uh, and staying glued on the screen like eight hours <laughs> yeah uh, you you are getting paid to to do some creative work and like rest is a essential part in this process. Mm. That is great, and of course they pay good. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. Great salaries. Yeah, that is good. I think. I mean, great. Uh, like from from other companies in IT, you know, like you can get yeah do like way better in other ways, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. what what does what made you what pushed you then to was it is it that pay thing because you just said you can make a lot more money in other ways to to start your own thing. I mean, f uh, for sure, like there were, I, I, I don't think the financial part was like the main drive, but it was like Google is like very, uh, you, you are like a, like a small piece in like a big puzzle, you know, mm -hmm. and it, because you are a small piece, they really uh, specialize you in one thing, which is like computer programming. And yeah, you can learn like some crazy stuff about computer programming in there. But my life, you know, I always wanted it to be much broader than that. I wanted mm -hmm. to create things. I wanted to make videos. I wanted to, you know, travel the world, yeah. play guitar with my friends and have a band and stuff like that. So I wouldn't be able to do that in uh, in Google. I also had wanted to have more impact and have my own business and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I had to take a decision, like, should I stay here and, you know, get a nice paycheck and... Uh, pay the bills and, you know, have fun on the weekends and going, I don't know, snowboarding and stuff. Or I start my own adventure and just enjoy it. And you have that the whole time. And you can everything. decide. Yeah, you yeah. can decide. You can exactly. decide on pace. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I guess for most people, we, we also spoke about it. It is, um, you have to be made to be part of the system or to be someone who leads people. And... Um, Yeah, I think it's part of the education as well. There are yeah. multiple components uh, in there. In my opinion, I think like everybody can reach the point where they can be out of the system. Yeah. Like it's all a mind mindset thing, yeah. you know. Uh, but you know, I I was like uh, I had this virus from like high school when I was like mm. watching these entrepreneurs from Silicon Valley and mm. that like I got really infected with that, so I couldn't stay like <laughs> yeah. Google. Yeah, Same just part. stay there. Yeah, I ma it makes sense. It makes sense. I, I, I think most people, um, 
especially the people we have on here, they 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 come to this point. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here because yeah. you don't reach out to someone just working somewhere. Like it's it's very yeah. hard. And you guys are kind of the same, right? Because you build your own projects Ex and you do yeah. your own thing. So yeah. yeah, you guys have this this virus as well, probably. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it you speak started. in such programmer terms. You know, you you said something before, like engineer. You got to engineer your friendship groups yeah. or your. And you said you have this virus as well. Yeah, yeah I just I realized. Did, I thought did. about the medicine virus. I didn't even thought I of thought about the program yeah. environment. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, I I, I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, never crossed my mind like medicine bars. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the different uh, directions. And I was yeah, wondering, so wh when did you meet with your, I guess your business partner or the co the other co-founder of the company, and and how did this thing come about? I know you've got the idea. You were saying that you don't want to stay. Was it in Facebook that you were at at the, at uh, the time? At Google, but I, I didn't have the business idea uh, until I quit like Google. So really, I quit everything. Just I need to not to be here. Yeah, risky I, guy. I, I quit like uh, being a programmer because I didn't want to code anymore, mm -hmm. which was a pretty good skill. You know, like they were paying me like uh, I had offers over 100k per year. Yeah. So. I could do easily do that in Google or outside of Google with other companies. Yeah. Um, so I decided that I don't need to do like computer programming because I want to do something else. Um, so I just throw myself into the unknown, mm. uh, and this is where the good. magic happens, you know. Because yes. if you don't, if you don't take the leap, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, you need to swim. Exactly. Success is the only option. Exactly. And I had to. I got to meet lots of people. <laughs> Uh, failure is not. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And um, then I met Raul and we had uh, some uh, similar visions about like Romania and the programmers in Romania and uh, their level uh, here, like in terms of their income compared with like US where a yeah. software engineer gets paid like way more, like at yeah. least 10K per month. And here like they make to 3K, 4K per month. Um, and we asked ourselves, hey, why, why, why? What, this doesn't make sense like yeah. <laughs> somebody should do something about this and uh, there there we went like we started this thing and so what was the what's the main goal of this company then our goal is to get all software engineers with experience from Romania to make over 10k per month uh, in Romania and our high level goal is to make like 100k millionaires in Romania over the next 10 years wow uh, with the main purpose behind it, like we, I really hope that these people, like once they have resources, a they can live a better fulfilling life for them and for their families, but b they can uh, impact the society here in Romania. That is great. I was waiting. For, I was like hoping that you say that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah, because that is something that that's our mission as well. You know, because we think it's a great country. The people yeah. have to to yeah to wake up a bit and understand that. You can even in Romania reach everything, and it's even it, it varies so much more opportunity. I, I'm so glad that you say that because you know you you come from outside and say that in Romania that really means a lot to me. Uh, and there are a lot of people that are born here, and they yeah. they think that they are born with this belief that Romania is shit and uh, you cannot do anything yeah, here, yeah. and everybody steals here and you need to get away. Yeah. And here you are, guys. Like you you come here and tell yeah. tell the opposite. So yeah. props for that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. We we have to say something that we realized from the beginning was that the IT scene yes. is very very big and developed in Romania. Yeah. Um and uh, I we asked ourselves where that is coming from. We know that the government that's one of the reasons for the good internet. Mm, yeah. They because the plan was like to um to to grow the economics. We need good internet uh, and access for everyone, cheap access. Because it will educate our people much faster, and that I think it worked. Is it right that that was their plan? Uh, I'm not really sure uh, about that, but for sure we had like we have like great software engineers. Like it's like world class talent that's living here in Romania and working from Romania. It's very underpriced mm -hmm. right now, very massively underpriced. That's why lots of companies come and up on yes, on yeah, that's the reason. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's this like amazing. Uh, talented people here like that are programmers that is and great can you imagine if all of them were earning the same amount as people in in uh in the uk or in the us or yeah. in switzerland the lives of people here would change dramatically oh, the yeah. amount of income coming back to the country as well would be ridiculous yeah taxes sure. everything it yeah. would be great yeah i mean our clients that we hope like they generate over a million at least i think I, it, it may be more at this point 
per month like they bring into Romania, you know, through their yeah. contracts. Uh, of course, they go into their bank's account. Like we don't take them or like. But no, but, no, but yeah. with that, they will buy property. Exactly. They will, yes. they will, they will consume. Exactly. And this is what, what lets the country grow. That is important. And it's also enriching the people themselves, not just yes. helping the other companies coming here to profit off of the software engineers in Romania. But those same software engineers can earn the same amount of money, stay inside the country, build a business, open up a, I don't know, start their own company and, and employ other Romanians as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Keeping the Romania for the Romanians, I guess. And uh, here's the crazy part. They they get to earn more money because if you make 10K in Romania, yes. you make 10K in completely New York. Different. Like it's completely, yeah. the cost of living more. here is, is yeah. less. <laughs> here you're really a king. When you earn 10K in wow. Romania... I mean, you can have the craziest apartment for, let's say, even 1K, that's even very high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have to, what to spend the money on, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. what do you do with 10K? Yeah. Like the, the only thing you can do is a car, that it's, that because it's the same price, but exactly. it's nothing else. And apart from the cost of link, we also have, like, very low taxes. Taxes as that's well. Too. Crazy low. Like, yeah. this is, like, amazing. Paradise. Like It's, it's paradise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a blessing in disguise, and lots of people don't know about this. And I'm like, yeah. what? blame this country when yeah. you have like so many advantages we, we met ki uh, kind of uh, a lot young uh, people who who kind of understand i mean andrew tate had also great impact on that a yeah. lot of people um mm -hmm. w w started waking up and understanding okay even romania wait this guy the, the right now most famous guy he lives here and he yeah. likes it yeah and um Yeah, we saw that a lot of people started understanding. They start being business minded, and it's I think the best that can happen to a country if the young generation goes that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. And also, the young generation is pretty smart as well. Very yes. excited about. Yes, I yeah. think you talk with Rarish, He's a pretty cool guy as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Also, who was it? Uh, uh, Matteo. The episode Mateo, yeah. should also be up by the moment that we, when you will listen to this, and. Uh, It's in, uh, and he's also in, into investments. Mm -hmm. He's in. He is a Romanian, but he lived his whole life in Italy. Came back now, mm, pretty cool. due to the fact uh, of the taxes. And he teaches people how to invest. Yeah. And um, he said the same. He said because he was so disconnected from Romania, he's, he's basically Italian. But he said one thing he realized now in his first two months in Romania: the people are very smart. The yeah. young generation. Yeah. Yeah, and they are. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Keep them. Uh, do you have a lot of young people? What are, how many people are you helping at the moment? Well, currently, like we're quite exclusive, so we work with only four people per mm -hmm. month. So people are waiting to get in. Like we have a waiting list that goes to May or something like that. So wow, uh, people are like, uh, they kind of need to wait to work with us. Um, so the but the one thing that we do is like we really get in depth with those people and we like really bring like a transformation with them we just don't like we don't really want to focus on just get them to like okay here's a contract because i can give that to anybody like yeah. here's a contract because i have <laughs> hundreds of them you know uh, uh but we really want to teach them like how to be a better version of themselves mm -hmm. like the version of the person that will get those contracts and go even beyond that because freelancing you know is not like the final destination. No. I think there are multiple levels mm -hmm. up uh, up from there. So, yeah. And how does the structure work? Is it that you work with a client for one month, give them all the knowledge necessary to become the best version of themselves and a great freelancer and earn more money, and then you leave them? Or how does it... So, it's like a 12 weeks, roughly. Mm -hmm. Like some people need less, usually. Uh, sometimes more if they, some personal issues appear, you know. Um, so... Our goal is like to teach them everything they need to know, so that so that they don't need us anymore for the rest of their lives, yeah. and uh, they don't need anybody else, you know, to mm -hmm. to to uh, operate in this freelancing market. Um, so the way it works is like very one one, very straightforward. Like it, we talk with them and we give them them some assignments that they need to execute, and we also have like calls with them mm -hmm. uh, where we explain them, and they also can message us and stuff like very punctual. So everything every little detail because there are like thousands of details that go into this like transitioning from the nine to five job to freelancing yeah every little detail they need to check with us and we give them like frameworks and we make sure they execute and they stay on the right track uh so the success is like not uh like failure is not an option basically mm, yeah. with all those details yeah that that that's fantastic good. that is great yeah and so yeah. you guys are just now trying to upside to, yeah scale to scale up. it yeah 
or we we want to we, we we don't want to like work with a lot of people we really like the intimacy of working with a fewer number of uh, persons but like they need to be like very well committed like mm, i had yeah. a guy who like wanted to work with us he like paid like a couple of months ago a seat reservation to to join and send us some money and uh, he in the past week he wasn't like he was like flinging us he wasn't answering very well and i told um, my team like hey let's give the money back to this guy who don't want him with this attitude yeah. like polluting my time because i i don't need that you know so i really yeah. want to work with a limited set of people but those guys to be like really motivated and yeah. I can really fast track them to to like higher levels like yeah. like they've never seen before. Yeah. I guess that's because that's the ultimate goal. Like you can have and I think that's a problem that Rara spoke about when we were last on the podcast with him. You can have like a, a company that helps people to reach a certain goal. Um, but you can have like maybe a hundred people that you're helping. And maybe 50 of them are iffy, like wishy-washy, hand in, hand He said out. even less. He said when he, he gives them the perfect plan on how to uh, start a successful agency. And he said sometimes only 10% do what, what is... And it's it's written there. Other, yeah. people, he, other people had to go like 10, like fail 10 times. Um, we know the same when we, we... I mean, we have an agency maybe uh, to tell you um, where we help people to study here as well. Mm. Cool. And cool. Um, we promote it in the videos. And we do that because we it was such a struggle to apply. Mm. Oh, so, you know, yeah. you don't know what's going on. Oh, and yeah, that's why we sure. why we do that. And even there, he, he said, like, if you have people, like, if the people are not committed, it's... it's yeah, it's and that's why we people need to pay us to, yeah. to work yeah. with us. If you don't pay, uh, you don't pay attention. You yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna, what I was going to say is that it's even better... Then have it is even better to have less people who are hundred percent motivated yeah, sure. and can give you fantastic results and fantastic testimonials as well on what you're doing and it yeah. helps you guys as well in terms of your self esteem knowing that everybody has done fantastically well rather than having maybe a bit more money because you have a lot more people signed up to your yeah. course but you know it's going fifty percent well because some other people are not doing yeah you well. you also get like develop another relationship with them you know when you work with yeah. four people it's like yeah, a bit 12, different 12, yes. um and uh and also it's like uh uh it's you know this is more ingrained like i I really like to work with people like be close with them and you mm. know in terms of success in business it's not it's not just like strategies and here's this strategy just implemented because like there are out of like other personal issues that might be holding yeah. you back you know like emotional stuff like issues with like family and parents mm -hmm. or like other personal stuff that you need to go through in mm -hmm. order to 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 reach that success and we also focus on those areas for instance now we have an event in a private event for our clients in march where the topic will be like we'll, we'll bring like a world-class expert in fitness and nutrition mm -hmm. and yeah okay. We'll only talk about that, and you know, we'll meet in Bucharest. People from all, all over the country, or maybe even outside Romania, will come to Bucharest, mm. and we'll just hang out together in this room, like with the brightest people and the, the top one percent, like of, of uh, programmers, you know. And uh, when you work with less people and you have this uh, engaged community, like the people in that community, like they really resonate well with each other, you know? Yeah. yeah. And if you have like other like 20 people that are half-assed in there, you know, they, they yeah. don't do the work. It's like, it's not the same level of, yeah. Yeah. of uh, chemistry in the community. Yes, you know? yes, yes. A yes. player wants to stay with A player. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, touching on the, the dietary and, and kind of fitness problem, I think loads of programmers have that problem, isn't it? Because you have the image of a programmer just being in a very dark room um, never leaving there for like 12 hours with a sore back and everything. So how did you kind of like stay fit? Well, I, I was into sports from uh, like when I was really young. Like I was just outside all the time playing football and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, the programmers usually do tend to uh to have those problems because like they're very passionate usually about like what they're doing and like hours just fly yeah. when you write code in there. And uh, it's very easy to develop like back problems and stuff like that with uh, not having like the minimum exercise, you know, like mm. physical thing. Um, so for me, I, I just uh, play sports regularly. I do yoga for six months now. 
I really love it because it like brings me more flexibility. Uh, and uh, I do cold showers like I started like two weeks ago. And I, I do like daily <laughs> uh, and every I did before that as well. But yeah. I don't know why I'm on a streak. I, I didn't plan for it. But <laughs> yeah. now I have two weeks and I, I really it starts to build the pressure on me because I want to go like every day, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I had a cold shower yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> not by choice. Like my hot water wasn't work. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Advantages of being in Bucharest, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bucharest is the guy. Yeah, for everyone from the outside, the people here are so so crazy. Like <laughs> they all shower cold. <laughs> As we will think now after watching yeah. this podcast. I- important <laughs> to mention that I had a cold shower while I had the option of hot shower. So yeah, yeah okay. You're yeah. you're a different class than I. Yeah, am. yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, I. Um, uh, I lost my question. <laughs> <laughs> I um, um, I had yeah. another. Maybe how long? I, I want to know how long have you been doing this project for? So I know the course lasts twelve months, but when did you actually? Tw- twelve weeks. Twelve weeks. Sorry, yeah. not twelve months. That's a long, t- <laughs> long time to be yeah. with somebody. When did you start the the company? Uh, almost four years ago. Like in the summer, oh, it will wow. be like four years. And it's going really well. Oh yeah, amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Amazing. How do you promote? Do you do that with the YouTube as well? We used to do that with the YouTube. I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, so we we kind of have like exclusive community uh, on uh, on Facebook. Like that's just for for uh, people that are in our outer circle. Let's say mm-hmm. like that. And there we like really provide lots of value and explain like f- to people for free. And the people that really want to work with us more privately, like they just message us and. Like okay, they come to us. Yeah. We we at this point like we did like some Facebook ads, uh, but now we don't do that anymore. Like yeah, especially when you have a waiting list, you don't. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. We, we don't need that. Yeah. 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 I I found a question again. That is out of this topic, but I that's something I still wanted to ask. When you were working for the big companies, were you really strictly restricted with like contracts and stuff? Was there something because sometimes it gives a vibe that also maybe sometimes stuff happens that shouldn't be talked or I talked this about. No yeah. About I, this well. I was close to get uh, fired by Google. What did you do wrong? He, he, it was he used he used a uh, ping or what's it called? Bing. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they caught me. I was speaking with incognito, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was. I, I shot a YouTube video, and uh, uh, the the story is as follows: like, um, one day at, uh, at my office, like my manager comes to me and he taps me on my shoulder, and he whispers me, "Hey, Christy, uh, can we have uh, like a meeting at 12 p.m.?" Uh, and I was like, uh, "Hey, can we have it like maybe two hours later because somebody's visiting?" And he was like serious to me and no we need to have it then. okay and uh i at that point i started panicking because i looked on the calendar and on the calendar it didn't appear you know the mm-hmm. meeting it was invisible yeah. uh and usually the meetings in the calendar at google like they are public everybody can see them most of them uh so this had something special about it mm-hmm. um so uh, i was thinking like hey maybe i filmed in the office and uh, they are not cool with it and yeah. because i asked them and they kind of didn't give me permission but I still did it uh, and stuff like that um, but I go to the meeting um, and uh, at the meeting there was uh, 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 a lady that played me a, a part of my video yeah um, so in that video uh, I was making a joke like uh, the, I was living in a neighborhood where, for the first time in my life, I was surrounded with uh, with black people. It, I was it was like a majority of black mm-hmm. community in yeah. there. So um, it was like a, a bit of a shady neighborhood as well, like Harlem in New York. I don't know if you know yeah, about yeah. it. Like, yeah, of there, course. There's a new serial now yeah. like on Netflix. I think about it. Um, and uh, I said, uh, I, so I I don't have anything with like I love black people so no no yeah. I, I don't have <laughs> yeah. any any problem with you don't that. have to start up yeah, yeah, yeah like <laughs> <laughs> going on red sweat <laughs> it's no problem man. we are not like Forza is not a he's not a social yeah. justice warrior yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at google like the, the thing that i said in the video it was like uh i made like a joke like uh, those those shady characters in there like in the, yeah. the neighborhood yeah. like i i said that uh, uh look at me i'm very skinny and these people are very big i hope that they don't beat me you know yeah uh, and i i said that in a joke you know um and uh, somebody in google reported me like they filed the complaint the uh, romanian guy probably and they of reported course, yeah. me to hr hey uh, check this guy 
and uh, the yeah. lady asked me if like she just wanted to check if I was racist or not you know and if I had the no if you were racist what would you say oh yeah yeah I'm, I am racist <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so yeah. we have to let you go then <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that I mean she she also said like that was like very exaggerated from the guy that reported mm. but she just had to follow up yeah with okay the, yeah with the okay. procedure you know um and uh, of course she gave me some trainings but yeah there was there wasn't an issue no way uh, then they were like yeah you have to come now five times uh, this is a black person yeah <laughs> this is a white person yeah how yeah. do you talk with a black yeah. you kind oh, of this thing is so stupid okay yeah but that is maybe also something i imagined you have yeah of course be. it's just social justice warriors like central yeah. but it's also it's a very scary thing when you explain the story when you enter into a room and somebody apart from your manager <laughs> is playing you a video of you doing something yeah. it's playing I, back I, your own I, I wasn't aware like okay, i heard the joke and i didn't okay what was the problem and yeah oh, <laughs> you're just so okay, confused yeah, yeah where, ah, why am i okay yeah <laughs> th- that's the problem um but it was okay and then the, that was like one thing i didn't like about google because um uh, not this instance but then my manager pulled me aside and he told me like hey look i work here like 10 years now and there are some people in here that uh i work with them like for from 10 years ago you know and i still cannot make just the little joke with them like i cannot afford that uh, and in google it's the case that if i talk with you and i make a joke with you and we are friends and we are just having fun like you know like stand up comedy kind of yeah, jokes yeah, yeah. and somebody overhears uh, us from like that point yeah. and they find what we are joking about like offensive. somehow offensive they can report you and you can get fired just by somebody like overhearing What? you not even not even a offen- let's say you are joking with me and I was a, I was a woman yeah oh, you oh, made oh, some no, funny oh, I make a joke about you being black what well, we do all the time yeah but no yeah we we make jokes yeah let's say you're making joke about me being black yeah? yeah i make a joke about you being half white half half arab yeah but then somebody else this lady is white She comes she says you can't make a joke about him being yeah. black and she goes reports it's not offensive to her is yeah. it she's just assuming that it should be offensive to Forza which is why it's a problem and David needs to leave Exactly exactly yeah. so how yeah how was that then because i mean you're Romanian something we we like here because we also more from let's say in the Europe comparison from the conservative side like we have the values that in Romania are kind of normal Uh, was that something that was a bit different for you then coming yeah, from Romania censorship. and then oh yeah it was this it was very weird because the, for the next videos that I was shot like was I was like very conscious about yeah. it like a big brother kind of feeling in my head you know like uh, like when I was like recording a black person on the street like just taking like shots I was thinking hey just make sure that's uh, I don't make a ne- wrong angle yeah. just to not be interpreted you know wrong yeah, like yeah. it was like playing in my mind like constantly and it was like really and just make sure that i don't say things in another way that can be interpreted even if i don't mean it yeah so that was like a, a really interesting experience you know to to have because you can get like uh, in trouble very easily there yeah yeah And the guy from Romania that reported me like uh, hi if you're watching. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do you know him? Do you know I don't know him. No. I asked but they didn't tell it's, me. It's, it's not, not a person work there, isn't it? It's just someone watching. No, no, no it's somebody, somebody that works. And then they saw this account is linked to you who was working for us. No, somebody else who was working in there. Yeah, th- so it's a person that works at Google, a Romanian because the video was in Romania. Yeah. In Romania. I thought it's I thought that they could see that I mean they of course your account is linked to your personnel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I thought that if I report you now would if you would say work that I would see then okay someone reported him and no, he's working it, for it had to be something from inside because it got through like a hr report internal like hr report you know um so somebody from romanian like he didn't have anything to do so he saw my video and decided to be like <sighs> a good googler uh, and uh, <laughs> just report me so he called a googler each other yeah yeah this is how you, <laughs> you, you you're called yeah googler But yeah. I really, I, I would have really appreciated, like if he like would if just talk to you. you. Yeah. yeah, that's the normal. That's just the normal send me way. a message. I'm, I'm human, you know. Yeah, no, that is the normal way. That is how you should yeah. do. Have a look for yourself and your surrounding, and then go to others and fix them. But and if he was really looking out for you, maybe he was like, yeah, just he should have said, bro, this is America. You can't really say stuff like that. You might get. Oh yeah, or, I would have appreciated it. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's terrible. I I want to know your opinion on Meta. I haven't worked for Facebook. Was what's your opinion on on the move to Meta and everything now? So at the time when I worked it was like Facebook. Yeah. Um 
I really like the culture. Like it was like more like a startup ish, if you can say that, mm-hmm. for a big company like Facebook. Uh, but like Google was like very more corporate, like uh, very uh, very structured. Yeah. In Meta, it was like more chaos, and you're just uh, hey, this is the task, just solve it. <laughs> like at Google, like they are very careful of on defining you the tasks. Yeah, more mm-hmm. in, more in in depth. But at Facebook, you just really need to solve it by yourself, and I kind of like that. I kind of yeah. like that. Uh, I imagine I don't know why, but I also imagine Facebook to be a bit more cool to work at. Yeah, yeah, I kind of felt the same. Yeah, the same. Yeah, I don't know when you look at what's his name again, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. It doesn't seem like somebody cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> at yeah. All. yeah, no, He's but he's a but bit of a robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But still, I imagine it to be more fun. Uh, then, yeah, what do you think? Do you think this meta uh, kind of uh, the metaverse that this is the future for like? I have no life? idea, man. I have no idea. I mean, they pumped like tons of money into it. <laughs> so it should better work out. Yeah. <laughs> From their standpoint, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know if it really will. They're really trying to just, yeah, bring you into like a, a kind of Virtually, digital yeah, yeah. world. Yeah, I mean, for meetings and stuff, it's already kind of happening now with yeah. those new cameras. And I kind of hate the feeling, you know. I, I just try to reduce my my phone interaction to a minimum. I just remove like my YouTube from my. I mean, a couple of months ago, I don't have YouTube, I don't have Facebook, uh, I don't have TikTok. Although I'm creating on these platforms, you know. Mm. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, I I try to stay as much as possible away because I see the benefits of you know being more present and the thought of being just more immersed into this world yeah, is like is i think the same yeah i i'm not really a fan of it but you know if there are some benefits with this uh, i future I, I i think personally that the benefits from the technological world are the ones we have already because it's a good mix um we have right now the internet the phones that give us access to it everywhere we go mm-hmm. so we kind of live the real life but you can use in the in the right way used it is um a great tool yeah but the metaverse for me it doesn't it doesn't ben- we don't benefit so much of it to say it is it makes sense to immerse yourself mm-hmm. like your fo- your whole life into it well you know but th- this is part of evolution as well because like if you take our parents they will say like oh the same about the yeah mm-hmm. they will say about the phone the same about the phones that you stay too much on the phone and stuff like that uh and maybe this is a uh, uh, I, I like to be open about it, you know, like mm-hmm. embrace what's coming because mm-hmm. uh, phones, they were pretty good in our lives. They helped us a lot. Uh, but it's how you say it, like it, if you use it well, like it's yeah. a tool, a knife can be like very good for like, you know, cutting your food, but you can also yeah. stab yourself with it and yeah. it doesn't make it like a bad yeah. tool just because of that. Um, yeah. I think it's insane how many creators are not using the social media that they're creating on. There are so many, not just you, but there are so many who we've spoken to and we know in our personal lives, us included, that we create on these platforms like TikTok and Instagram and YouTube shorts or whatever, but we don't ever consume it. And that's something that people may be watching us. And I'm not saying if you're watching us, turn it off immediately. <laughs> but people, watch watch, people watching watch us, um, watch our content. Our content is good. <laughs> but people watching us need to also know that Look, a lot of the people that are creating content for you are not necessarily using it as much as you are. Also not recommending to, I mean... I mean, they're benefiting from from you watching your stupid... Yeah. Like, you make, they make stupid videos mm. online and they're, and they're just benefiting from you watching it and they're not even using the... Com- like using no, but I would, say, I would say it's stupid content that is created. Some people, yeah, but I would not put us in that No, shelf. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the majority of people on these platforms. Yeah. On TikTok, you can see, bro, it's it's a bunch of garbage yeah. on TikTok. Oh, that's yeah. the and point. people that's are why using we, it like crazy. Yeah, and, and we don't even like uploading that. It's, we think it's it's very stupid. It is a wild place to be. And uh, yeah, people have to use the content right. Also our content, uh, yeah. I, I think that's is, is, it's a pretty good point to make in the sense that you want to be in control on what you choose to watch uh, rather than being fed yes, randomly fed, exactly. like things like TikTok or maybe even YouTube recommendations, you know. And you, I, I strive to make my environment like that's why I don't watch TV or news and stuff mm-hmm. like that uh, 
because I strive to make my environment to engineer my environment mm -hmm. uh, you <laughs> know, in a way that I I really decide what it's allowed in my in my exactly. attention span you know yeah. in my in my in my eyes yeah uh, also for your future family because that's something that a lot of people don't know TVs and, and the phones they came because the society is much easier to control Ooh. because that is yeah. that is where uh, television it's coming from vision yeah they give us something they they influence the kids with it all the politician political agendas are pushed with uh, the tv series with the kids yeah. series already mm -hmm. yeah. and it's a great point that you do that f for yourself and that's i think what people have to start but especially parents have to see what their kids are exposed to they need to they yeah. really yeah. do need to like i was w i have a niece a young niece i think she's six years old and whenever she comes over for the holidays I see that she's so well adapted to the YouTube and knows what to search to get exactly the kind of results that she wants and the kind of videos. But there was one video where she was watching uh, somebody, she likes watching people play games. Like everybody nowadays likes going on Twitch, watching people yeah. play. And she's watching this lady who's playing like phone games, but they're just so like always on the, f the phone games is always like, yeah, I have this boyfriend and he broke up with me and this kind of stuff. And I'm like, look, she doesn't need to be watching this stuff at the age of like five or six. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you can't watch this channel anymore. And it's, it's surprising because when I'm not around her, I mean, she, she, like she goes to school and things like that. And these other kids are also watching mm, things that yeah. maybe their parents are not around all the time. They have to, uh, they have other kids, they have things to do. Um, but it's something that parents have to be mindful of because these kids will grab onto anything. And there are really some really bad things out there that are yeah, openly yeah. available for them. Yeah. What what I can can see like in the people in the new generation is like the focus and the attention span is like shrinking. Let's say yeah, it's wild. It's fucked. It is. Or in a better <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean for us already, like I would say all of us sitting at this table, we already compared to the people in the old time, they would they would part of the day would listen to music. They would sit down, play the music and listen to it, sit down. Yeah. For us, we already can't do that, but okay, fair enough. We use the music as a tool to, to do other things, but to drown the noise in our heads. Yeah, Just, but the ones yeah. that are coming now, they are really like for them, they, 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 they are on the phone while having the TV on, watching something there. Yeah. And uh, then, I don't know, like it's ridiculous. And it's, it's, it's very it's, tiring. Yeah. It's not good for us. Yeah. I read a book uh, of, a, uh, I think, a German who wrote about the digital uh, uh, dementia. And he said multitasking mm. is the worst you can do. For oh, your yeah, for sure. This is one thing I'm trying to uh, implement and stick to as a habit in my life. Like just have two hours time for myself every day. Mm -hmm. Two hours where I, I'm not exposed to any uh, like content or like any uh, notifications and stuff like that. I don't have notifications on my phone, but you know, just don't read emails, don't work, just sit. Yeah. Just sit for two hours and let my mind, because what happens if I don't take those two hours, what I notice is like when I go to sleep, like my mind starts to bring me like all these yeah, thoughts process, yeah, and I yeah. cannot sleep and I get frustrated. Yeah. So I decided, okay, let's put those two hours in into the day. day. Into yeah. the day. Great and idea. I sleep like way better. From yeah. Yes. From Fantastic. That. Yeah, yeah. That is the way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, it's been lovely chatting to you. How do yes. you, do we call you Christy or Christian? Which one do you Christy, prefer? Christy. Christy. Yeah. It's such a nice nick. We it just is. spoke about it, you know. We, I, we like that the Romanians uh, have the nickname Christy for the Christians. Yeah. yeah. And because it's not, uh, in other countries, Chris. Chris, yeah. But Christy we learned here and it's it's a very nice. My second name is Christian. I was like, yeah, this, this Ooh, is a nice I want one. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want that as well. But no, it's a, no, it's a late home, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been lovely chatting to you, Christy. Yeah. You um, too, guys. Do you want to plug me. anything that you, you have going on? Uh, I don't know. Just follow these guys, and uh, if you if you like their if you like this conversation, uh, make sure you leave a comment for them for the algorithm. Uh, yeah, so fantastic. you get ranked there where you you're, where you need to be. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Well, you thank all you for having me. Thank yeah, you. So much you're, for you're, yeah, we are we are grateful that you came around that it yeah. went so smoothly and uh, yeah that we had this great conversation. Maybe one day for a part two. Yeah, you know, sure. If, Absolutely. Yeah. We have, can talk about further things or things that happened that we experienced. Exactly. Um, for the people that are right now tuning in um, on our second channel, mm -hmm. um, you can also give it a like, of course. And to the people in the audio apps like Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, 
you can leave a review. Please do. Yeah, yeah. and share it to people who uh, might like it as well. Yeah. Go, go, go. Yes. All of Chris's links will be in the description below yeah. as well. So his Instagram will be there. Um, if you want to sign up to his course to help you become a perfect freelance programmer yeah, um, in 12 it. weeks, uh, one that earns over 10K in Romania. I don't think they can sign up. They need to be well, verified. They will, <laughs> yeah, no, they, they will to. be on, yeah. If you want to get. It's not like from scratch. No, yeah. no, 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 no. You'll be on a waiting list as well, man. This, yeah. this course is. This everyone, is serious. Everyone wants this. Yeah. yeah. They need so. to be verified to get there. So not, yeah. not everybody gets on well, the Well, you, you can apply. You can apply. <laughs> yeah. Um, and your YouTube also will be inside the description as well. Yeah. All right. So you can awesome. check him out. Thanks. Check Thanks. out Thanks. his adventures. Okay. This was the Romanic Show, episode seven. Arrivederci. And ciao.